Uh, are you guys ready? Great. Uh, the next speaker we have. Uh, unfortunately, I'm the moderator now. <laughs> <laughs> so the next speaker we have is Chun Ming. Uh, he's a he's an awesome guy. He can introduce himself, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're just being lazy, aren't you? I know. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Chun Ming. I'm from All In Data. Um, basically, we are a training consulting company, and um, I do not have a grudge against you or anything earlier. I think public is better than accessible. I'm a public guy. <laughs> right, but no, don't yeah, worry. But, but I think it's not like one is. Much yeah, yeah, but in general, yeah. configuration management tools are awesome, right? Okay, but um, today here, I'm not going to talk about configuration management tools, right? I've been giving too many talks on Pub already, so, um, so I decided to do something different this time. Um, so, I came across this technology um, last year, and it was similar to the cloud. See, what we have these days is all about open site, open site, open site, right? So this time, what I want to introduce to you is Open Nebula, and hence my title, Deploying Open Nebula as a open source solution for the enterprise cloud. Yes, and uh, this disclaimer first, and for whatever images that you see on the next following slide might, re might not reflect the actual content of my talk. Okay, so first of all, what's the current state of the cloud? You know, everyone wants to go to the cloud, they say, oh, okay, I want to build OpenStack, I want to use VMware, I want to use EC2, and so on, right? Why do we do that? Because we want to keep up with the trend, or we want to just scale. We want to build something. So initially, the cloud happens. So we want to have the PaaS, PAA, PAAS, IAAS, and so on. So this is more of like, how do you say, we want to make money. But these are the common things that people keep on approaching. And let's just say, my client, they, they always come to me and say, hey, Chun Ming, I want you to build me a cloud solution and the first thing I ask them what do they have in mind the first thing that comes to them is always OpenStack and I ask them why OpenStack and they say because OpenStack is the in thing right now the in thing right when we were talking about building a cloud what would you first think of um, your name is David right what would you think of first thing uh, easy to access Maybe Amazon, maybe OpenStack, right? But these are the great players. These are something that has been there, but do we really need them? That's my question. So hence, I ask my client, do you really need OpenStack or do you need something else? And he told me because OpenStack is the name, and chose, hence, I chose OpenStack. But that's where I start to correct that. And this is where my topic comes into play. All right, and what comes into play is I want to see how you actually need or what you need to build your cloud. You don't really need such complexity, okay? For example, EC2 is beneficial, but there are so many things that you do not need in there. Do you really need VPCs? Do you really need RDS and so on? All these are unnecessary. And then you come to OpenStack, you have Cinder, you have um, you have, let's say, Neutron and all this. It's too com complicated for average end user or a company that just wants something simple. Who uses DigitalOcean? So you like it because it's a one-point click thing, isn't it? It's so cheap. this is what my clients want it's, to be. It's cheap, it's $5. Yes. Yeah. Sorry? It's, it's cheap, it's just $5 yeah, or something. Yeah, it's cheap and it's easy to use. It's like a simple one-point click thing, isn't yeah. it? If you go to EC2, you still have to click in this, click that, fill in the blanks and whatnot. It's too much of a hassle, all right? And especially for enterprise cloud, we're talking about private clouds. These guys, they just want to be able to play, deploy machine rather than fill in the blanks, okay? So you do not really need everything. And therefore, I would like to introduce to you Open Nebula, okay? Open Nebula is what we commonly term as the open source solution to VMware. How many of you have actually seen how VMware works? VMware vCenter. 
right? So you have seen it, or maybe some of you are not aware. Let's just say, Open Nebula is a platform that brings the best out of several different other platforms, like EC2, like VMware, KVM, or um, OpenShift, or OpenStack into one. So they take the best of these components and integrate it as one. Meaning, like for example, if you are used to deploying via templates on VMware, you can do the same thing out of uh, Open Nebula. Images, also Open Nebula. You want to have simple network management. Okay? Simple network management just by clicking, yes, I get this IP address, I get this network, and done. So you basically you do not want to restrict yourself to a certain specific vendor. You want to be able to have third-party integration, right? And let's talk about setups. How complicated is it to set up OpenStack? Or um, VMware is very complicated. You have a lot of packages, you have a lot of uh, configuration documents, documentation, and everything. But we open Nebula. It's as simple as running yum install open nebula and open nebula sunstone which is the g1 these two packages will bring you the entire controller server already you want to install the compute node one package open nebula node package and there you go your compute node is ready and that, that brings you the entirety of open nebula why they don't have uh, network or storage and whatnot I will explain it to you as we go along through these slides, okay? Okay, so Open Nebula, let's take a look at the infrastructure. So let's see how it works. Okay, I choose Open Nebula obviously. And so Open Nebula is very simple. We have the back-end networks, right? All the service network meaning the drivers. Open Nebula integrates with all the components using drivers. We don't build them in. Because when we build them in, like how OpenStack builds it, you are actually locking yourself in. Whereas, if we just provide you with the drivers, you can use multiple different types of, let's say, data storage, multiple types of uh, networking mechanisms in a single setup. And you can just integrate it through the backend service networks through the drivers. And all this, you can control or add through the Sunstone GUI. They call the GUI Sunstone. Okay? And the Sunstone GUI will also control the VMs. And the VMs has its own network based on the host. Meaning that, let's take a, an example again with the uh, open side. You want when you choose a network, it's all about neutron. Neutron meaning open V switch. We don't want that. And then we, if we want to integrate with VLAN or VXLAN or EV cables, <coughs> we still have to use Neutron and we have to use the plugin for it. Right? But we don't need that. Sometimes what we need is just a simple setup on our server, plug it into Open Nebula via the API or the drivers, configure it, and make it work. Just right out of the box like that. That's what we are looking for. We are, what we're looking for here with Open Nebula is simplicity. Okay? We do not want something too complex. When we have simplicity, it makes us adopt <coughs> technology easier. We do not want to configure something that is too complex and in the end, where we never use it at all. Okay? So these are usually the core, this is the core portion of Open Nebula, whereby we have the monitoring, the metrics, the storage, network, database, authentication, virtualization, um, cloud bursting where you can integrate with public clouds. So you have your private cloud set up, or you can then you can burst it to the uh, public cloud just in case you do not have, do not have any more compute resources available. Okay, so hypervisors. So what is supported in Open Nebula? I'm just going to go through the feature rather simple. And then I'll show you, if there's time, I'll show you a demo on how it actually works. Okay? So the hypervisor support are the standard hypervisors like KVM, XAM, 
right? Uh, what also adds in is the VMware uh, EXX or uh, vCenter supports, okay? Uh, there's obviously a few more that's upcoming. They're still, in, they're still building to already version 4.12. And uh, it's built by the Open Nebula Systems Company. They are a really cool Spanish company, by the way. <coughs> okay, next thing, the next feature that we have for Open Nebula that makes me want to use it is ease of ACL, access control list. Okay, when we want to have to create a policy for access control list for any uh, of our, let's just say, platforms like VMware, OpenStack, or Amazon is not as easy as it is, right? What I want to see is being able to select a group or user and then by giving me a list of the actions that I can do and select them, like allow, allow, disallow, what I can view, what I cannot view, and so on. And just by ticking these boxes, I should be able to control or create a policy or ACL for my users. That way it makes things a lot more easier for me. So, I be, so my control now becomes more granular. The idea here is you want to have more granular control so that unauthorized <coughs> person cannot actually manage what is not allowed to. So because usually you have like the cloud users and then the cloud admins and obviously the infrastructure admin itself. They need different roles, isn't it? So this is where the ACL of OpenML comes in. Like, and the next thing, all right, so software-defined networking. Again, like I mentioned, everything is all about networking, okay? With, with uh, Open Nebula, our networking choices are broad. We can use Open vSwitch, EVK rules, uh, eight zero two Q VLAN, or VXLAN. Then we have the same feature as Amazon's EC2 security groups, all right? So this, how does this software-defined networking work? We don't really need it all the time. OVS uh, is open vSwitch is software-defined networking, but do we really, really need it? When we implement that, we are actually in introducing complexity to our already existing network setup. What if we could just create a network, tag it with a whatever VLAN numbering, and send it to our router switches? We want something as simple as that. We do not want another application on top of our switches managing our network, right? <coughs> so, with Open Nebula, you can have a cluster of hosts with a simple Linux bridge networking, and then another cluster of hosts which uses Open vSwitch. So basically, you can two, have two different clusters with two different networking, and you can connect them to Open Nebula. Open Nebula has an interface that says. Okay, you are using uh, the Linux uh, bridges and you are using uh, Open B switches. But when you create a network, it still gives you the same interface as a start IP, end IP, network name, and so on. What is your bridge name that you want to integrate with? And that's all. That's about it. That's what we want. Simplicity, yet diversity. We want to be able to integrate with all sort of different third-party applications. Is that right? Okay, the next thing, storage. How many of you use shared storage? Can I see a show of hands? What kind of shared storage are you using? Infers. Sorry? Infers. Uh, Maybe like SAP or Glasser FS yeah. or NFS. Yeah. You're using those, right? So, who uses, let's just say, OpenStack here? Can I see a show of hands? No, but you. Okay, so you're using SAP, I presume? Yeah. So, but then when you use Ceph, this is that what you're tied to with OpenStack. Is it your choice or was it your type down to it? I think it's a choice. It's a choice, right. So this is what we want, right? We want to have the choice of being able to choose different type of storages. But when you choose that one storage, you usually have to stick to it, isn't it? Same thing, but in, again, like I said, I'm going to mention Open Nebula's name a lot of time. I, I think I'm going to start getting sick of saying it myself. All right? So, so we refer this one as, as usual. So one allows you to choose, again, multiple different storages and 
use it and integrate it with the daemon as well. Meaning that you can have a file storage, a file system based storage that uses SAP. Your image storage that probably uses Swift. And then your another uh, shared storage using Gluster FS. So basically, you can have different type of data stores using different storage mechanisms. We are not tying it down, tying it down to a simple one, a single one. Okay, the next thing is what is missing in OpenStack or VMware. And this is what Amazon has done right. The, the existence of a marketplace. Right? So, because when we want to deploy something for, let's just say, for a private, uh, for a public cloud, we want to be able to give our users the ability to choose what sort of OS they are building. But in order to do that, first of all, you need a marketplace of images and templates. Right? So, when you have the images and templates, then your users can actually select, say, oh, I want to deploy a VM out of this image or template. That is what we provide you. On top of having connectivity to the uh, public marketplace, you can create your own private marketplace for your own internal usage. Yes? Isn't that like a uh, pass, like uh, containers? No, just uh, it's like images, like, uh, like QCOW tools or whatnot. Mm. But by using plugins like okay. Docker, you can have the Docker plugins, uh, Docker containers too. And then, autoscaling. How many of us love the feature of autoscaling? Nobody loves autoscaling? Only two? That's it? Okay, why do we want autoscaling? Because we want to automatically scale our infrastructure when, let's say, we hit a certain threshold, isn't it? Yes. So that I can sleep at night. Sorry? So that I can sleep at night. Yes, sleep at night. We want to sleep at night, right? So, what is missing again from all the other components like VMware or OpenStack is auto-scaling, right? We want simplicity in auto-scaling that says it's like EC2 auto-scaling feature whereby if my CPU hits a certain threshold, I'm going to spin up another X number of VM, okay? If my memory takes a hit, I want to spin up another X number of VM. When it's done, it goes below the threshold, I remove all the extra VMs that I spin up earlier. At the same time, saving me costs. Right? So this is what also we provide to you. It's, it's a feature what we call the sorry, one flow. It's called one flow. And then the next thing is federation. We have federation. So basically every data center we probably have one installation of open network. And then you have like 10 data centers, 10 installations. But it's going to be a pain when you have to manage all 10 of them from 10 different Sunstone uh, UIs. So what we do is we can bring all of this as one. So basically, the federation is equivalent to zones or your availability sites or your regions in VMware or OpenStack or um, let's just say EC2. This is what we call federation bring it under a single control of a single UI. <coughs> okay, and the next thing. We, I mentioned earlier about ACLs where we have more granular control. But this is a little bit different. This is what we call VDC or virtual data centers. Meaning that we can create a virtual organization within our open nebula itself. So, let's just say we have a federated setup. Right? But then your user is only tied down to your, your data center. But you want to be able to have access to specific compute resources across different data centers. That is going to be complex when you create the, the ACLs. To make it simpler, what we do is we bring all the selective compute resources as a virtual data center. And then you add your user group to this BDC. By doing so, you can have your control over that BDC itself without changing too much of your ACL. And next thing, cloud. We can do public cloud versing. Like I mentioned earlier, if what happens if your compute node or your compute resources ran out 
You really need to spin up machines quickly. So, we comes with an integration with Amazon EC2, VMware, Hyper-V, Azure, IBM Soft Layer. So you can burst your cloud from your public or your internal cloud to the public cloud itself. So you can like, it become a hybrid, a pure hybrid. And monitoring, that's important, isn't it? So we provide you monitoring is a very simple mechanism. We don't use complex stuff. Okay. For example, KVM Zen, we have their own monitoring solution, their own monitoring mechanism using UDPs. We provide you with UDP uh, pushes from the, the host to the server. Also, we also have the SSH pool for active monitoring. Or you can use the monitoring daemon collective that is integrated into Open Nebula for metrics purpose, for monitoring purposes. And metrics, where are they? What are these metrics that I'm talking about? The metrics that I'm talking about here is your usage. Okay? When we are talking about your usage, meaning how much of memory this, this uh, machine uses, how much of memory that machine uses, or memory, or, or this usage and everything. Usually, this is what we call the show bag or the charge bag. You want to know the cost of running all this. Fortunately, with version 4.12 that was released a few days ago, Open Nebula now has an accounting feature that you can take a look from your um, dashboard for, for each and separate user. Also, you can show you your showback charges, meaning that we tell you how much of uh, resources you use and how much it will cost you for that amount of time. And I think we still have a couple more minutes. Do you have any questions? <laughs> if you have no questions, I'll actually show you the the open nebula installation right now. Okay? Can we can you go back to the BBC? I, Sorry? Uh, BBC. How how do you migrate that? Because if one like just say one BBC that how how the monitoring you uh, the monitoring, so basically uh, there is no, a... No, monitoring, the yeah. BBC. Sorry? The virtual data center. I, I didn't get it. The virtual data center. Oh, the virtual data center. Okay, so the VDCs. All right, so basically, <coughs> let's just say you have uh, one data center here and one data center here, right? So you have two different set of compute resources. So when you have a user for one data center installation, you're only restricted to these compute resources. When you federate them together, you want to be able to access this, but usually is you'll be able to access it as a whole. So with the virtual data center, meaning that we take selective compute resources, one or two, one or two here, and then we bring it together as a virtual data center. So that way, you do, your ACL will not be too complex when you want to add the user to manage only a specific resources from different data centers. You will add it to the virtual data center instead which already has all the complex, uh, minimize the complexity for you, where it takes up the compute resources from different servers, bring it under a virtual logical group. As you can see, it's the name of difference. It's a property, right? Sorry? I assume it is different. It's a function. Yes. How, how that's, you know, how can we combine, you know, that function thing? Yeah, so, so everything is done done under uh, Open Nebula. You just need to federate them together, and then you just need to create clusters and VDC. So basically, everything on Open Nebula is a point and click. So it makes things a lot easier for you. I can show you how it's being done, actually. Hmm? Five more minutes, okay. One minute. Good. Not on. Can you do that? Oops. See, this might be running. Sorry. Right. So blame him. He did not turn on my charger. The VM saw shut down. Hi, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay, so this is the, the dashboard, very simple. Okay, let's just start with a simple cloud user interface first. Are you using virtual box? Yeah, I'm running out of virtual box. <laughs> Alright, so now you can see here are my virtual machines list that I have. And by just clicking on this, I can say what is the state of my machines. See, it's very simple. All I need to do is just click on it and see what it looks like. And let's just see further. VMs, if I want to create one, add. And I select based on my available template, which I already uh, make one. Okay, and then you can see my capacity and how much the cost per hour. All this I'll show you how it's being defined later, shortly. And also, if it's not my capacity that I want, I can change it. And does this not look familiar similar to AWS EC2's uh, setup, isn't it? My, I add my interface, whichever interface that I want to, and I just will click create, and it will just create as simple as it will be. Okay. The next thing is templates. Okay, uh, the user. So here we have the accounting. I'll show you the accounting features. This is my cost that I, I've been using over the last couple of days. How much of memory, CPU, and how much does it cost me? And then, if I go to show back, okay, and you tell me this is how much. It cost me for the entire month for running three virtual machines. It's kind of a little, a little bit expensive, yes. How do you uh, pull out pricing from AWS? Sorry, pull out? Pricing. Like, is that pricing? Oh, the, uh, we, this one we, we are unable to pull out the pricing yet because this is just a so brand new shop. No, this one is preset. Also, oh, you're hard to right? Yeah, we, we, I'll show you how we select the uh, show bag uh, cost shortly. So this is the simple user cloud users uh, interface. So let's see how does a admins interface look like. Oops. Yeah. Alright, so from here you get the overview of our entire setup and we can see the allocated CPU, memory and you know the standard stuff that we take a look, we get to see. <coughs> okay, and then let's take a look here. The system, the users, the groups, the VDCs, okay, we can just like say set the VDC belongs to which cluster, how many hosts, the groups and so forth. And your ACL, okay, let's take a look how why I like this ACL a lot. And you see, replies to which user, you can choose your specific user, which zone, and all your affected resources. Let's just say data stores. And what can I do in a data store? I can use, manage, administrate, or create. So this gives me a simpler and yet granular control over my user's ACL. Okay. Okay, I think I this. Then virtual resources. We have the virtual machine list for all my machines. And let's just say we can see the capacity, storage, the network, the network data. And then you can take snapshots. Placement is policies whereby you can decide which server you want to allocate your VM to. You can choose which host. Based on, let's just say, if your this server is running uh, too little memory, put it to another server. Put, put it to another compute host. Then we have the actions, template details. This is all our template details. System logs. And of course, we have VNC. Okay. On top of VNCs, we can we we can use uh, Spice as well. So you can plug in this to Spice on top of just general VNC. Okay. 
many workflows to make sure you write the templates. One admin template, the template details. So basically, we can have the permissions of who can use it, as simple as it is. Then we want to update the template. And we can choose how we want to do it. See, for each template, I can say, for each 64 MB of RAM, it costs me one. One unit. OK. This is. And then, all right, then the CPU, and the cost, and virtual CPU, and so on. So unfortunately, my time has run out. So thank you. If you have any questions, you want to see more of this demo, you can find me after this. I'll still be around. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.